In this step-by-step -step tutorial, we're going to walk you through how to create an ebook on Canva. Now, I have created several ebook kind of tutorials in the past and you can see some right here. But what I wanna do differently in this step-by-step -step tutorial is give you more of a quick start kind of approach to creating an ebook and some of the things that many of you have asked me and some of the guests frequently ask questions based on the previous videos that I posted in the past. So I wanna go ahead and kind of answer some of those and hopefully uh, you'll know exactly how to create an ebook a lot faster and better in the future. So if you wanna learn more, keep on watching. Hi, my name is Aurelius and on this channel, I'll share my tips, tool reviews and tutorials to help you scale your business with online tech. So if that interests you, be sure to subscribe below and turn on notifications too so you don't miss a thing. All right, so let's get started. Here I am on the Canva dashboard of my account. So the first thing you wanna do when you are going to create an ebook is to choose the right size. There's actually no right size. It really depends how you want your ebook to look. If it is for a Kindle, then you'll need to find out what the guide uh, guidelines are, the formatting and the dimensions for that. But for this specific tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to basically create an ebook that someone can read, uh, you know, on their computer or on their phone. And the most kind of universal size is an A4 or letter size kind of uh, document. So what I would go and suggest you do is to look for A4 document or letter document, all right? So in this case, I've got my A4 document right here. However, you can alternatively search right here for A4 document and that'll appear right there or you can select uh, letter and that'll give you that uh, size. So US letter document. So I'll choose A4 document in this case. So I'll click that. Now, once you do open it, you will see a blank canvas and that's okay because this is where we can now create our template or more so select a template based on the templates right here. So looking here, look for a template that you may like and want to base your ebook around. All right, so this gives you a foundation rather than starting from scratch to hone in more in terms of finding the right templates, what you wanna do is to search the templates here, search for ebook, because if you just use one of the default ones, if we go back, these are just ones based on A4 uh, size. So that's why I recommend searching for ebook specifically. That'll give you better results. And as you can see, like these ones here, we've got blogging 101 free online course. This is a pro, uh, template. So if you do have a pro account, that's great. But otherwise, uh, look for the free ones, which uh, usually are freely available. You can see this one's got eight pages. If we just hover over that, you can see a preview as to what other pages they have and the formatting and the layouts of those. So keep looking, keep browsing to find the right one that may be suitable for your future or current ebook. This one here, we've got a content, we've got a chapter title, we've got the actual content, you know, so there's four pages here. Now to apply a particular template, all you need to do is just click once and then you'll see the pages. Now, do you wanna insert an individual template or do you wanna apply all the pages? Simply click on apply all four pages to apply all. And you can also delete pages that you don't want anyway. So you can see here, we've got page one, search for an endless summer and all this can be modified as usual just like any other canva design we've got table of contents here and then a chapter title and the actual uh, book ebook uh, content all right so one of the questions i guess uh, one of uh, some of you have asked is what happens if you have more than like four pages uh, whatever the template uh, you know, has. So this one in particular has four pages, as you can see. If you want more, all you need to do is just duplicate one of the pages of your choosing. So let's say I want to duplicate. We want to make another copy of the title or the chapter page. We can simply click on duplicate page. That will make a copy. Now you can see that it's obviously not in the right location that we want. So all you need to do is just hit that move down uh, option. That'll move it down to wherever you want. So you keep repeating until you, uh, you know, it is where you want it. Another common question I get is, what is the maximum amount of pages that you can create on a Canva design? Well, the simple answer is 100 pages. Now, 
if you do exceed that or if your ebook exceeds that, then not to worry. All you need to do is just create two of these designs. So this is considered one design. And then you just go back, all right? So let's say this is the design you just created. You can see it's just generating, but we can make a duplicate copy. So make a copy so that you have then two designs. And with that, all you need to do is just save it as a PDF, download both designs as a PDF, and then you use a tool called Small PDF to combine the two together. You can see the tool here, smallpdf.com, and where you wanna go specifically is Merge PDF. So I'll go back here so I can show you when you land on smallpdf.com. Now, there are other tools out there that can do the same, but Small PDF works as well. So click on Merge PDF that you see here, and from there, drop the files or choose the files from your computer, and then that will merge those PDF files together. So that's how you go about combining PDFs in case you do exceed 100 pages. Now, the great thing about Canva is that anything you see can be modified. So you're not stuck with just using the default template and the layout and the colors. Let's first of all change the title. So I'll click this where it says search and then change my title. So I'll just name this blogging 101 anything you wish. And I'll just drag that out of the way, deleting anything I do not want. And then I can modify the actual size. So by just clicking once on the text layer here, we'll decrease the size to the size that we want. And then moving it to where we want. You can use the guides as well, where the purple lines are to determine or to show, you know, you can see where the actual center is. Now these other elements that you see can also be deleted and usually with Canva they do have or they do use these stock images that where you don't know where the source uh, you know came from where these photos came from so the safest way especially if you're selling an ebook and if you don't want to get caught with copyright and all that then make sure you use your own images or images that you have purchased a commercial license to so I'm going to delete whatever's here and now I'm left with this blank canvas. Now, if you do just wanna use a plain solid background, then you can do so. I'll just delete that for now. But in order to add a background, you can actually just click on the background. I'll choose a color from the top left corner here, and then choosing whatever color I want. Let's say a gray one or a yellow cover, all right? I've got blue as well. Now, if you do have a blue background, then obviously you do want a different color for your text, such as white, but let's just choose this gray here. And the rest can also be modified to match the branding of your ebook. So for instance, with this circle here, I'll just make sure that I click or select that particular layer. And then from the top, I then select that same gray color I chose before like that. Now this table of contents is simply a placeholder. So what I would suggest you do is to actually do the table of contents last since many of the pages will be modified. You'll be adding pages, maybe deleting some, editing and so on and so forth. Looking down, of course, we've got the chapter cover or the image. We can modify the background once again to the color that we want. So this one here, not sure if these are actually the same. It is the same, so we'll use that. And we can rename this to, let's say, chapter one, chapter one, and deleting anything we want or adding things that we do want. So let's say we want to add a particular element. Uh, let's say this, uh, let's keep scrolling down to something that we do want to add, something that makes sense. We can actually search for blogging or blog or website. And let's say we want to add this one here. Now this is a pro element. You can tell by hovering over, it says pro, but that's what we can do. And I'll just select that layer now, move it to where we want like that, and then resizing it down like so. Looking down further, this template also provides the actual content of the ebook. I can change the font style if I want to by clicking here and then choosing the font style that I want. So let's say I want this one here, Remo, I'm not sure how that will look like. So quite plain, looks similar to the Arial font. So let's say I'm happy with that. I can just use that for now. 
and then add the content uh, that I want. Now, unfortunately, Canva isn't actually made to create eBooks, right? So you're going to have to do things uh, more manually in, in a way where, yeah, you do need to add page numbers yourself at the time of this recording. I'm not uh, aware of any upcoming updates, you know, where uh, you're able to automatically insert page numbers. Hopefully it'll come, but I will put it out there since I'm a Canva certified creative and I get kind of insights and uh, early access to some of the new features. But as you can see, if, we, if I look down, if, or if you look down on your template, you'll see at the bottom, it may be the case where you see the numbers. If not, you can add your own numbers, but this one shows, you know, page 32. Let's say this is page four. You can modify it. Now, if you do have an extra page, let's say you want to add an extra page for your ebook, I'll just duplicate this specific page so that I'm keeping the consistency, right? I want to keep the pages consistent with the rest, add or write the ebook as I would normally write it. And then I would then change the page numbering to five so on and so forth as I progress and keep writing my ebook. Now, another thing I want to show you is what happens if you want to wrap some text around a particular image or element. So I'm going to give you this example where I'm just going to add this image, let's say this PDF here, or let's use my image right here. I'll just add that by clicking. So I've uploaded these into my uploads. So it's right there. And what I'm going to do is just add it here and crop it so that only I am showing. So this could be useful for, let's say, an about the author page. I'll add it right here. And then as you can see, obviously the text or this, the writing isn't actually being wrapped around that image. So in order to kind of uh, do that, what we're going to do is create another layer. So this is one layer of text. What we can do is uh, we can size it in a way so that it starts from this point here. So I'm just going to, for now, duplicate this layer. So by clicking this layer at the top, you can see duplicate. So I'll do that. So now I've got two copies so that I'm not losing any of the content. Now with this first layer, what I'm going to do is just use the text at the top. So first of all, let's resize it down to something like 18 something a bit smaller. So then I can show you as a demo. This image is still rather big. So let's resize this down too. Now I know it looks a little messy, but just bear with me for now and I'll, I'll show you what to do next. Now what I'm gonna do as well is delete any text right there. And then from here I can modify it or resize it so that it actually goes into this area here. And as you can see, it exceeds the page size. So I'll just keep uh, sizing till I get the right, you know, dimensions right here. And then with the rest of the text, the text that I deleted, of course, I can go and go ahead and add it in. So I'll delete whatever I've already added. All right, and then from here, I'll just size it down to the si same size as this, which was 18. And then now I can size it the way I want. And that's the way to go about basically wrapping text around images or elements. Next up, if your ebook is more informative or a, more of a how-to kind of ebook, then you may want to add things like graphs, all right? So I'm going to show you one little trick. So elements, you know, these are things that you can do. I'm going to just close this or go back to the start and I'm going to choose a shape. So let's say I've got like a pie graph or something, or I want to illustrate like, uh, you know, different types of information. We've got a circle here. I'm just going to make another copy, duplicate. All right. So I've, now I've got two. I want one color I want maybe is a gray and the other color is another gray. And then I got this kind of overlap, you know, that I want to show. And then I'll just highlight both of them to then increase at the same time. And you may want to do that this sort of thing if you want to illustrate, let's say, you know, what's your target market? What's your niche? This is kind of like your ikigai, you know, which is a Japanese term, but this is kind of like the sweet spot for something. So that's just a little demo and example right there. 
Now with these templates, you're not restricted to just sticking with the template that you applied. If we go back to templates, we can actually go back and look at one of the other templates. Let's say we want something, let's go back up here. I'll just search, hover over some of these to give me some inspiration. And that's exactly what you can do. So with this one here, I'll click once and let's say I like this page in particular. I can then just go down, I'm going to click on add page. And then from here, I'm just going to click once and that'll add it to that blank page I just uh, added, right? So from here, I can then modify it as I wish. And that's the way to go about kind of modifying your ebook in a way so that it has different layouts and that you're not restricted to using whatever you're given with a particular template. In addition, it will save you some time in thinking, you know, what type of layout should I use for my ebook? Now, once you're done with your ebook, if you wanna save it, as a PDF document, it's as simple as clicking this download button right here. And we're going to choose either PDF print or just a PDF standard. PDF print is high quality, which means that the file that you save it as will be larger. If you have a lot of images, then you may wanna consider just using a PDF standard, but if it's for print purposes where you're going to hand out this ebook for your customers to print out, then you want to choose PDF print. Once you've selected the file type, you can select the pages that you actually want downloaded, individual pages or all of them. If you just wanna select all of them, then keep it at the default at all pages and then click on download. And once you've downloaded it, that's the PDF document that you wanna to hand to your customers or readers. So there you go, that pretty much wraps up this tutorial on how to create an ebook on Canva, plus some tips and tricks that you can apply to make your ebooks a lot better. If you found this video helpful, by all means hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, so that you'll get tutorials just like this in the future. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and do stick around to watch these next relevant videos. Thank you.